right. Give them a hand. Yeah. All right. All right. Give the Lord a hand. Yeah. Ushers, come quickly. Everybody's prepared to give, right? Uh-oh. Everybody's prepared to give, right? All right. With these brothers will wait on you this morning for a tithe offering, building fund, special offering. You give it missions, whatever you have, wherever you'd like for it to, to be used. Just, just drop her in this morning, and then again, we'll bring the bucket back. If the Spirit prompts you, you want to sow a seed offering any time during this service, it's always it's always appropriate to sow seeds into the kingdom of God. The Bible says, as we sow, so shall we also reap. Amen. A man, I, I, was, I was in insurance for a little while, and a man told me years ago, he said, Mike, people want a Cadillac policy for a Chevrolet premium, and it will not work. Most of us want a Cadillac, want a Cadillac blessing, for a Volkswagen offering or for Volkswagen seed sowing and it just does not work so you just sow into the kingdom of God this morning we're going to pray together and then we're going to worship together and most and we're going to hear the word and most importantly God's going to visit with us and move in the house today let's give him a hand one more time Let's pray together. Lord, thank you, praise you, we love you. Thank you for gathering us into your house this morning. God, for giving us a desire. Thank you for your spirit that rests in this place today, for the word that we've already heard. Thank you for the worship that's going to take place, for the word that will go forth, and for the work that will be done for this congregation before we leave today. Anoint the congregation as we give into your kingdom, multiply it and bless it, Use it for the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. Gather the offering, brothers. Let's worship today.
you feel about it this morning? Amen. I am convinced this morning that I can go to the Lord. How about you today? I am also convinced this morning, Brother Billy, that my God is real. Amen. Are you convinced this morning that your God is real? Amen. If you're not convinced this morning, maybe you need to change God's. Maybe you don't have the right one. Hey, man, if you're serving the same one I'm serving this morning, I, Brother Jason, my God, is real. Let's do a little bit of that old song. Let's keep that up. Come on, let's magnify. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Come on across this building. Let's begin to lift him up. Come on, somebody shout with the voice of triumph. I said somebody shout with the voice of triumph. Let the enemy know that you're here and you're ready to trample on his ground. Come on. some help right now. Come on, I want somebody to let the devil know that you're ready. Come on, don't just I need somebody to begin to worship. Somebody clap your hands. Come on.
Somebody grab your neighbor's hand right now. Everybody got a neighbor's hand. If it's appropriate. Just throw that hand up in the air right now. Who's ready to receive the rain? Somebody just begin to receive it right now. Come on, come on, before we go any further, come on, I want somebody to grasp right now. We're just to receive the rain. Come on, it's been dry too long in your life. It's been dry way too long. Come on, you're ready for a breakthrough right now. 
Come on, everything else that you've done in your life right now, everything else that you tried, that you went to, it has not worked. And it has made you run away from God. And your ground has become dry. But today is the day that your ground is going to receive the rain that you've been waiting for. Come on, I want somebody to throw your hands up right now and just begin to receive that rain that's ready. Hey, I see a cloud. It's the size of a man's hand. But you know, oh, glory. Come on, I see a cloud in the distance. And I know rain is in the forecast for me. Come on, somebody raise your hands up and begin to accept that rain. Somebody say, we receive. 
salvation. We await the promise to come. Everything that has been spoken will come to pass. Let it be done. Oh, let it be done. Let it be done. Let it be done. Every promise. Let it be done. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody reach up in the sky right now and begin to claim it right now. Just open up your just open up your heart right now. Lift your hands. Receive. Receive from the Lord. Receive. Receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I receive, God, what you have for me today. Ah, the former and the latter rain together. I receive it today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I just I'm open. I'm hungry. I want to receive what you have for us in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Let's give the Lord a, just a good praise, a good verbal, vocal praise right now. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I appreciate everything that you're doing in our life today. Thank you so much, God. Thank you so much, God. Aren't you glad to be in church today? So glad to be here. On your way back to the seat, would you, uh, uh, would you shake hands with some folks that are maybe hadn't been here in a while or wouldn't hurt to get up from where you are and go shake hands with some folks and just introduce yourself and maybe the first time here, uh, we've been blessed for the last two years, two and a half years, every church service, we've had somebody new or at least every Sunday morning we've had somebody new and that's so, that's so great, isn't it? So great, so great, so great in what God's doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Man, God is good. Thank you, praise team and singers, musicians, for leading us into the presence of God from the, very, from the children on, on all the way through. Thank you so much. 
Uh, let me reiterate just a little bit uh, concerning, uh, we uh, had made announcements a while ago, we did that on purpose so that it wouldn't take a lot of time uh, away from our, uh, from our, our streaming that we were doing. But let me remind you uh, of a couple of those announcements again. Couples Retreat uh, will be the first weekend in November. That's a Friday night. And then a, a, it's a Friday night session, then a Saturday morning session. And we'll be through by 12 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, please make your plans to attend. Uh, today is, is the deadline to, to let us know. And if you're, if you're planning on going, I wish you'd just raise your hand. Be you planning on going? Come on, there's oh, there's one. Yay, there's another one. There's another one. Anybody? There's oh, there's one. There. If you if you if you've never been before, talk to Brenda and Derek about what a good time we have when when we go. It's a great time. It's not classroom study. It's fun. Uh, it's inspirational. It'll help you appreciate your spouse even more, and it'll be a great time. And and listen, after Saturday, the guys all go golfing and the girls all go shopping. That's what I'm talking about, togetherness, right? You don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss it. Brother Holland, will be, will be, he and his wife will be speaking, and he has proven to us that he's a man of faith, and, and he knows how to have a good time, and they'll be here with us. He'll also be back here on that Sunday morning, pre, uh, uh, immediately following that. So looking forward to that. So just uh, be sure to, oh, yeah. We invite you to come with us and enjoy a good time. We, we, just, we just have a great time together. Very informal and, and just uh, get to know each other, fellowship a little bit, and uh, help, uh, help with our, uh, our relationships. And I thank God for that today. Amen? Also, let me remind you of, uh, of uh, Wednesday night is always great. Of course, Monday night prayer meeting, Bible study. Uh, there's a Bible study going on. And then Tuesday night, celebrate recovery. Uh, and then Wednesday night is, is our evangelistic service. It's not just for young people. It's for everybody. And Brother Jason has already uh, told me he's, he's announced his, his, his subject already. It's grace on the go. Grace on the go for, for Wednesday night. Grace, say it with me, grace on the go. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that great? So we'll get into the, Lord, the word of the Lord today, and thank you so much for your attention, and thank you for just the next little bit. I'm not a long-winded preacher. Everybody agreeing? I have been known to, but most of the time I'm, I, I'm pretty good about cutting it off about 55 minutes or something like that, so I'm joking. Uh, Exodus, second chapter. Exodus, oh, oh, we got a brand new member here today. I don't know where she is, but Kate McKinsley, Glover, yay, yay, amen, praise the Lord, a brand new member, we don't even have to, we don't have to have confirmation or vote them in or anything, when they're born into it, they're members, right, isn't that great, that's so good, thank God for that, and uh, others that'll be, that, that are expecting, we're so glad for, for that, it's a joyous time, Exodus 2.16, I'll get right into the word of the Lord. If you have any questions about zoo trip, you have any questions about couples retreat, if you have any questions about uh, uh, candy trunk retreat, if you have any questions about uh, anything that's going on right now, just, just be sure to see some of us at the church. Verse 16 said, Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the trough to water their father's flock. I like that. Working women, right? Right, I like that. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you're come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Now, that's a, that's a very wise father. He's got seven daughters, and I know he needs to get them married off. And here's a man that'll work. Here's a man that'll stand up for women. Here's a man that'll protect. All right? He said, bring that man to me. I need to see him. I need to see him. And verse 21, Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter. 
Moses was content to dwell with the man. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time today, this worship and, and, and all the good things that have taken place. Now, Lord, just speak to our hearts, inspire us today uh, to go on and do more than we've ever, we've ever accomplished in, in, in your name and in your power. We ask it in Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Amen. I really like that part where, uh, where the scripture talks about the, the women working and, and, you know, being able to draw. And actually, that was, don't, don't, don't throw stones at me. That was women's work in that day. Drawing the water was a women's work. That's what they did, you know, while the lazy guys were, I guess, smoking pipes or whatever. But, but the women was, were drawing the water for the flocks. Uh, there weren't streams in the desert. They had to go to the oasis and draw water and so the flocks could drink. And, and on this occasion, uh, they were kept running them away from the watering hole. And Moses showed up and knew this wasn't right. And uh, he protected them, defended them, ran off the, uh, the culprits and said, okay, I'll help you draw water. And uh, that's a beautiful story. And I'm telling you, uh, I just feel like I feel to deviate just a moment here before I go on into my lesson and tell you that some of our young people settle for too, too little, too soon and too little. I mean, the first guy that comes by and pays you a compliment Probably not the guy you need. It's a, it should be a long, sought-out experience with courtship. It really should be. Uh, just, just, just because he sits on the same pew or just because he comes to church, that doesn't mean he's all right either. Uh, I just feel to talk to young ladies here for a few minutes. I'll talk to you guys after a while. I mean, see, those guys, the, the, we men... Uh, we'll just tell you we love you, we love you, we love you. So we do, and we mean it. We're not lying. We mean it. We really do. But tomorrow we feel different. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see, men have such a drive and, and, and such a, you know, I, at that particular moment, they'll tell you anything. And they really mean that they love you, but tomorrow they'll feel different. That's why it's very important that we, we choose and select and, and, and we pick that, that partner that we'll be with for the rest of our life and make sure that we don't make the mistake. And, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong, and you may not agree, with people that have actually made mistakes. There's nothing wrong with them telling young people, I made this mistake, you don't make the same mistake. Amen. Woo! I mean, find somebody that's got a job. Look at how he treats his mom and dad. If he's disrespectful and he's a smart mouth and he's always running mom and dad down, get, run from him as fast as you can. And what happens is it's the esteem of young ladies. Maybe you're not the perfect whatever. There's no such thing as a perfect form. There's no such thing as a perfect time and uh, there's no such thing as a perfect size. Maybe you're, you're not the perfect size. You may be skinny as a rail or a little, little fluffy and plump. But you are who you are. And don't feel, don't feel bad because you are who you are. Amen. That man that, that really, that really uh, takes your heart and gives you his is not going to be concerned with things of that nature. Come on. I mean, we're not looking for eye candy anyway. We're looking for somebody who will get in the trenches and work with us and live for God and do what it takes to become a, a family unit. That's what we're looking for anyway, right? And I know, I know all this premarital stuff going on today. I just have to, I just have to wait out just a minute. I'm going to get back to my text in just a second. You know, somebody said, well, you, I just got to find out how they are in bed. Who cares? Do they have a job? Will they work? Do they expect you to bring them their, slip, your, their slippers? Do they expect you to wait on them hand and foot? Run from them. Run from them. It's, all, it's a mutual thing. It's a mutual thing. Okay, I'll get off that. I'll, I'll do that one Sunday, though. We'll talk about this. But I thought it was good. See, here Moses comes in. Moses gains a wife that day. But he also gains the respect of his father-in-law because he was willing to protect. He was willing to stand up. He was willing to do what was right in that given situation. And I, I'm glad to have men uh, and young men and young boys who will do what's right. 
Amen. Now, back to my scripture. My last closing scripture was, and Moses was content to dwell with the man. And I want to talk for a few minutes, and I don't think I'll take this out of context. I believe, I believe it'll be biblically sound today. But uh, the scripture tells us that he was content to dwell with the man. When we talk about contentment, and I've got a definition of content. Content is, is when you become satisfied with a certain level of achievement and not wishing for more. Being content is when you're satisfied with a certain level of achievement and not wishing for more. Now, I know when we think about contentment, we think that's a good thing. And it is that we, and the scripture tells us, Paul, 1 Timothy 6, 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. In Philippians 4 and 11, he wrote to the church at Philippi, not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Now, see, there's a, there's a fine line drawn there, uh, just like it is with pride. Somebody said, you can't have pride. No, you shouldn't have pride in that you think you're all that. You know, and, and, and a Coca-Cola, too. You're all that in a Coca-Cola. There's a, there's a fine line between that and, 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 and presenting yourself. Have a little bit of pride about yourself that you don't present yourself to the world as a slouch. Or that other word, I won't use it. <laughs> Y'all can guess, okay. A little pride. Take a little pride in, in, in the way you do your work. Take a little pride in the way you, I mean, if you're putting boxes together, at, 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 you're in the shipping department, put them together with great pride. Amen. So there's a fine line between having pride, you know, being puffed up and prideful, and just have a little bit of a natural pride. Same thing with contentment. 1 Timothy 6, 8, having root, food and rain, but let us be there with content. And then Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For as he hath said, I will not leave thee nor forsake you. There are some things we should be satisfied with. To be content with carnal things, Or to be not content with carnal things will lead us to covet what others have. If you don't like your car and you see somebody driving a better car and you say, I want that car, then, uh, you, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm being honest, I, I've never been one to, to, to covet other things. But I had a first cousin, rest his soul, he's already, already went on, but a first cousin. And I had a rich uncle, and this, this was my rich uncle's son. And when he entered into high school, the 12th grade, they brought him a, a 1968 GTO, and it was sharp. If I ever had a favorite car, it would be a 1968 GTO Gold with, 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 a, with a brown vinyl top. And I mean, it had the four and the floor, and, and I think it's a 440 and all this stuff. If I ever had a dream car, but I looked at that, and my brother and I, you know what we had? We bought a 1951 Chrysler with a, with a, with a and it, we bought it together. Uh, with a, a cruise matic you know, you could either shift it or you could go into, go, you know, go, uh, yeah, Brother Robert, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you're not old enough, but <laughs> 1951, we had to push it, we had to park it on a hill. So when, so when we, we push it off and get it cranked and get it going, and, and then sometimes it wouldn't go. But I was, I was really envious of this young man. I was envious of him because his dad and mom bought him a, a brand new GTO without payments, without anything. And, and, I, and here I am, my brother and I working. Working, working, working. I mean, we, we actually work for them. And while he's cruising, we're working. And while he's partying, we're working. So we work for them, my brother and I. And we, we get pooled our money and bought us an old car. And I really had, I really had envy. I'm going to be honest. I, I coveted that car. I coveted that car. And, and I wished I had it. And I looked at his lifestyle. And he always had the, the, you know, the sneakers and the jeans. And, and, and you know, everything was just perfect. He was a great athlete, and all these things had happened. I coveted what he had. But listen, I've learned since then to be content with what I've got because if I'm content with what I've got, God will bring me better. So uh, let's don't covet what others have. We have food. We have clothing. We have uh, our spouses. We don't need to covet somebody else's spouse. See, the enemy wants us to feel discontented 
with everything in our lives. So when we get discontented, we start looking in other directions. And before long, something catches our eye. Somebody catches our eye. And we're not content at home. So we get discontented. And we start looking. And we start liking. And we start talking. All right, I better quit there. Don't get X-rated. But there's one thing we should never be satisfied with. And that is our relationship with Jesus Christ. Salvation is not a one-time dose. Some people tell you, you know, come on up here and repeat the prayer, sign the book, uh, get baptized, and you'll never have to worry about it again. Salvation is not a one-time dose, and you never need it again. It's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. It's every day. It's every week. It's, it's every time because we are going to continue to grow, and we want to continue to progress. And we want to never be content with our walk with God. I like the songs we sing, and it's more and more and more and more of you. And over and over and over and over. I need Him more today than I did yesterday. I need Him more tomorrow than I did today. I need Him over and over again. I need Him. I'm not content with my walk with God. I want it to be better tomorrow than it was today. Amen. So Moses, after being miraculously birthed, divinely spared from the wrath of Pharaoh, came to a point in his life where he did not feel he would ever amount to any more than he already was. Forty years old, he's in Pharaoh's court. He went to, he went to, to Cairo University. Uh, he, was, he was part of the, uh, of the Gator team, I guess. Somebody, I don't know, whatever's in the Nile. The dolphins, no, not dolphins, fish. He was part of that team. He, he rallied for the University of Cairo. He was being groomed to be in leadership in the government. He knew there was something for him. But here he is, 40 years old, he's not married. Uh, here he is, 40 years old, he has not really achieved what he wants to achieve. He knew he had a ministry, but he gets reckless. He gets reckless, and one little hiccup in his life, and you know the story, he went out and saw uh, the Egyptians, uh, first of all, he saw uh, uh, the, one Egyptian uh, a, a, as he was trying to come against an Israelite, and he slew the Egyptian and spared the Israelite, and the next day he goes out and two Israelites are fighting, and they said, are you going to do us like you did the Egyptian? But he got reckless, and one little hiccup caused him his position in Egypt. One little hiccup caused him to lose his standing lose uh, his authority and lose the favor of Pharaoh and all the government. One little hiccup. Some folks have had hiccups in their life, and some of you have had a good case of it and can't get over it. But, you know, one little hiccup, and you think, my life is over. My life is ended. I made a dumb mistake. I messed up. I went where I shouldn't go. I did what I shouldn't do. I'm here to tell you, God cures the hiccups. God has a cure for the hiccup. One little hiccup in your life is not going to lose you out with God. So here he is. He feels like his, his life is gone and there's nothing else he can do. And that's what a lot of, a lot of young ladies and young men do too. They, 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 uh, uh, they, they say, here I am. Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to be an old maid. I'm, I'll be 20 next, next month. And, and, and I'm not married. And what am I going to just marry the first bum that comes along? And there, uh, Sorry, but that's true, right? And listen, well, let me get through this and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So Moses flees to the desert. He rescues the daughters of, uh, of a wealthy herdsman. He lands himself a job, finds himself a wife, starts a family all in one day. It does seem like everything is going great for Moses. He's very good at what he does. After all, he's been trained. He graduated with honors. Uh, he, he had all the leadership classes. He went to John Maxwell seminars three four times a year he knew what it was all about he was destined to be a ruler so it was no surprise that he had great skills even in menial tasks so much that Moses became content to be the second man he became content to be the hireling he was content to be a servant to another he was content watching after another man's sheep he was content caring for someone else's empire 
develop, developing leaders for others, fulfilling someone's destiny while his lay empty. He was content. This was now before the burning bush experience, the direct call on Moses' life to be a leader. Moses had destiny inside of him, but he was content to be a shepherd. He had ministry in him, but he would not let it break forth. I like my little life. I like my little family. I like my little job. I, you know, I like to get up at, 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 at the 6 and get off at 6, and, and Mama's got supper ready, and I can play with the kids around the campfire. This is my life. I'm content with that. But you see, Moses had a call in his life. He was content to be a husband, a herdsman, and a father, and, and all around nobody. He was all around nobody on the backside of the Sinai Desert. Just nobody you could think of. Happy with a wife. Happy with watching somebody else's sheep. Content with being cheated out of his spiritual birthright. He was content with being cheated. Satisfied to live in Midian, in the land of Midian. Midian means judgment or habit. Moses was satisfied to worship God out of habit. Habitual worshipers. That is, worshiping just from a habit. And when you worship from a habit, you become a Pharisee. When your lifestyle is not on purpose, but it's just a habit, you become a Pharisee. When living for God is not on purpose, and you just do what you do out of natural instincts, not because it's spiritually led, it seems to be expected of me, you become a Pharisee, right? And I'm not content being a Pharisee. Amen, I'm not content being a Pharisee. I'm not content. See, I'm a, I told Brother Jason this morning, I, I'm, I'll be 65 in December. And I know that's, you know, that's uh, one, one Friday, I may have told this, but one Friday I got 14 calls. Uh, you know, those, those robo calls and people calling to try on my cell phone. And everyone said, congratulations, you'll be turning 65 in December, you know. And after the 14th one, I was real patient, but I said, you know, I'm getting tired of being reminded that I'm turning 65 this December. But, I, you know, I'm 65. I'm content with this building. You know, this is comfortable. It's got good air, good lighting, good people come here. I'm content with this. But I've got to think about more than what I'm content with. There's another generation coming on. There's another group of people coming behind me. There's another group of leadership and levels of discipleship that are coming behind me. And I can't be content with what we have today because I, at some point I have to hand off to the next generation what God has done for us so that they can build on that and become a greater church than we've ever seen before. I've told you many times, I don't believe it's God's will for this church and this church uh, back in the early stages, I, I don't really know history. There's not very many people left here that, that, that do, but uh, the history of the church was, was always 30 and 40, I'm sure. 30 and 40, 30 and 40, maybe 50 or 60 at one time or the other. And, and we've, seen, we, we've seen a little bit, a little bit of, of upsurge in the 30 years. We've seen a, a little, you know, get up to 80, get back down to 60, get up to 90, get back down to 70. You know, and that's the way churches operate. And we blame it on it's the seasons. You know, churches go through seasons. Uh, you know, well, if we lose 20, we'll go get us 20 more, and that's all we want. We're content with 90. We're content with 70 because that's, that's our comfort zone. That's what we can handle. That, that's what we can take care of. Uh, that's what we can be at ease with and never go beyond that. And I believe today in America, and it's not just Pentecostal, it's not just Baptist or any other kind of, of, of religion. I think the problem today is too many churches are content to be in their four walls. And if people want to come, that's fine. But we're going to worship. We're going to sing our songs. We're going to do our dance. We don't really care whether they come off drugs. We don't really care if they get saved. We don't really care. It's, we're just content to be here. I'm just happy to be here. Right? I can be content with what, with what we have today. I mean, I, I, can, I can ride off into the sunset and say that we've been successful these 33 years because I believe there has been a progress. I do believe it's been a gradual progress over the years, and God's blessing us. But I believe God's setting us up for the greatest revival we've ever seen. 
And the, re the reason I talked so much to young ladies a while ago is, is I know y'all you, keep hearing stuff about the bridge house. Some of you don't even know what we're talking about with the bridge house. We felt the burden to reach young ladies that have been coming out of rehab, drug alcohol rehab, or coming out of, out of jail uh, from, from, from that to, to, to isolate them. Uh, because most of them, and, and if, it, if the shoe fits, just wear it today. I'm not going to apologize. Most of them, when they come out, uh, they have a codependency with some man, and it's either a boyfriend or it's a husband, and they go back to that boyfriend or that husband, which is usually their dealer. And in two weeks' time, they're right back in the, in, in the gutter again, even though they've been through nine months of, of rehab. And, and, but I'm telling you, I believe as a church, it's time that we, we, we not, we're not content with just having church here a little while. We're not content with just having a little, bit of, a little bit of goosebumps on Sunday morning. We need to reach out. And this bridge house is going to, we, we, we believe, and I believe, I'm staking my life on this, my livelihood. I'm, I'm staking anything that I ever have materially on this that it's going to be a bridge that will bring people from that drug culture that will bring people from that that, that that awful that awful awful uh, lifestyle to a brand new life in Jesus Christ buried in his name baptized in his spirit to walk in the newness of Jesus Christ I believe that and I'm not content with just having church as normal I'm not content with just having a few here and a few there I'm not content with a little bit going on. Moses was content to dwell with the man. Moses was content to just have a little relationship. Moses was content to be the second man. Moses was content to do what he's told. You know, some churches, they just do what they're told. They don't have any Bible. They, have any, they just do what I'm told and I'll be all right. No, no, no. I need to understand what I'm being, what's happening in my life. I need to understand that God can lead me and God can direct me. I am not content. I think there ought to be a holy discontent in every one of us. Something churning, something moving. I can't stand it when I go to Walmart and we make fun of the way, of the way people dress in Walmart and all that, but have you ever thought about reaching them? You know, we make fun of the way people present themselves. Have you ever thought about reaching them and becoming a friend with them? Have you, I'm not content with the friends I have. I'm glad I got good friends, but I'm not content with having a handful of friends. I want to make new friends. They may not, they, and the first time you hug them, it may not smell real well. But I'm not content with having, having well-dressed uh, well friends. I want to reach out to a few that are less fortunate. I want to reach out to, and listen, I, I believe this, this, this is the, this, thank you so much. That reminds me. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I'm so excited about what God's doing. Amen. Now, here's what we can do. We can stay. Uh, we can get in this rut and stay in the rut and go to 90, 70, 90, 70, 75, 100, and back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, or just have everybody that God wants to send this way open up the doors. We want them to come, but we want them to come, but. We want them to come, but it's time to get rid of those buts. Yeah, it is. It's time to get rid of the buts and just say, we want folks to come. I said last week, I'm going to try. I don't know, I don't know of any Muslims that live around here. I'm going to try to win a Muslim this year. I don't know any that live around here. Bubba, you may know. I know there's some in, over, over at Belmont. I'm going to try to win a Muslim. Amen. I know a lot of people living live lifestyles that are not pleasing to God or not pleasing to the church. I'm going to try to convert some of them this year. Oh, yeah, but, 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 no, 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 no buts about it. Some of the churches in larger cities are having, having, having folks that come and, and, and get converted that have even had change operations. And what used to be a man is no longer a man. What are you going to do about that? Kick them out? Put them out? If they get right with the Lord... Amen. I'm not content with just, just, just your everyday. I mean, I love, I love rednecks. I are one. But that's not the only one. That's not the only people I want to reach. There's some, there's some, there's some very good African-American people, and there's some very bad ones. I'm going after the bad ones. 
Amen? We want the lawyers. We want the doctors. We want the school teachers. But I'm here to tell you, if we could get them and get them out of that sin and get them out of those problems and not be content with what's going on, let God clean them up, polish them up, speak and span. They can become lawyers. They can become doctors. They can become school teachers. They can do great things for the kingdom of God. I am not content. Moses was content with being cheated out of his blessing. He was content with being cheated out of the things that God had promised for him. I know what God has promised for the last at least 20 years. I've heard the prophecies from this pulpit and the prophecies from this floor that God was going to make this a melting pot and a meeting place and, and, and Iuka and Corinth were going to meet right here. This was going to be the, this was going to be the hub spokes would go out I've heard that prophecy and I believe that prophecy and I'm not going to be content until it happens <laughs> this would be that'd be a real good opportunity right now to stand up and praise God a little bit just praise him I thank you Lord I thank you Lord let there be a holy discontent in my life let there be a holy discontent in my life in Jesus name I pray Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be seated for just a minute. I'm going to close in just a few minutes. But I, I want you to look, I want you to look at, the, at this generation of people. I, I want you to look at the, uh, uh, where, where are the, uh, the, the 30s and 40s? Stand real quick. 30s and 40s. I don't mean you were born in the 30s and 40s. I mean your ages. Okay, Third, look here. Look at this. This is the next generation. Even on up to 50. 50? Come on, stand if you're up to 50. Up to 50. Come on, this is the next generation. This is the generation that, that we, we will pass off this baton of grace to. This is the generation. And let me, let, me, let me speak to this generation right now. Never become content with the status quo. Never become content with what everybody else is doing. Never become content with just doing it like we've always done it because it's always worked. But listen, if you always do what you've always done, you're going to always get what you've always got. It's time to break out. Come on. I'm not contented with just having church. I told you about my, you may see, I told you about my upbringing in the, in the little white block church. I know y'all were raised in, in the tabernacle. It hadn't always been a big old church. It was a little bitty church. Always. Hey, I remember the little white church. I remember the things that went on. I remember folks outside uh, that, that were trying to waylay the preacher. I remember a stick of dynamite going off in the edge of the woods while we were having church one night. You're talking about an altar filling up. That was God. They, they, they let a stick of dynamite go off in the edge of the woods out by the old, the old baptizing pond. And the, they, what they meant for evil, God meant for good. The altar filled up with people. Folks were getting saved and baptized and Holy Ghost coming down. What they meant for evil, God meant for good. I'm not content to go back to that church. I'm not content. I think, see, things are changing. My life has changed. Yours has changed. If you don't believe it, have a grandbaby. Your life will change tremendously. What about the 20s and 30s? I know I got the, the 40s and 50s. 20s and 30s. Stand up real quick. That's the next generation coming on. Yeah, 20, 30. 20 on a, wow, we got to get some work, do some work on this generation. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a generation that doesn't ever need to be content with what's going on. Don't be content with just having somebody baptized every once in a while. Don't be content with just having somebody pray through the Holy Ghost every once in a while. Don't be content with just having a, a goosebump on top of your goosebumps every once in a while. Let this become a way of life to us. Break out of the box and let God do great things for us. I'm tired of being cheated out of my spiritual inheritance. My mother, your mother, your dad, many folks here paved the way with hardship. See, we weren't always accepted. We weren't always slapped on the back, right? We were those funny-talking folks. We were those holy rollers. We, we were those that, that, that everybody looked down on. I remember riding the school bus and trying to explain to people 
And they were laughing and mocking, you know, because of who we were. We don't have to put up with that today because somebody led the way. Somebody blazed the trail. Somebody went before, Sister Evelyn, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody blazed the trail. And now we sit here in an air-conditioned building with good lights, good sound, carpet on part of the floors, enjoying each other's company. And God wants to tear the roof off. God wants to expand the walls. God wants to expand our friendships. God wants us to reach out into the sphere of our influence and bring many, 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 many souls to Him. How big a revival do you want? How many souls do you want? You Sunday school teachers. Some of, you, some of you have two this Sunday and 20 the next. You know, it's just, it's just so erratic. But how many kids do you want in your Sunday school class? How many kids do we want in the overcomers group? How many do we want that are being used of God in a, in a miraculous way? How many? I say as many as God will send us. But we ought to have 100 like this, 20, 20, 20 and down stand. 20 and down, 20, 21, 22, whatever. Stand up real quick. We ought to have a hundred like this. They're not content with what the world has to offer. Not content with just, with just uh, singing in the choir every once in a while. Not content with just being, uh, being called out on, in Sunday school to answer a question. I want a move of God in my life. And I think you feel that way today too. How many of you say, I'm not content? I'm not content. You be seated. Man, we need a hundred of those. Somebody said, that's okay as long as I don't have to put up with them. You're content. I don't care how many we have as long as I don't have to. Uh, you're content. My mother, the, the one thing I disagree with her about, and, 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 and she, she's gone on now, but she got about 70, 70 72, 73. She, she made this thing. She said, I've had my day. Now it's up to y'all. Now I agree you're supposed to pass it on, but I don't want to ever quit. Never gonna quit. I'm gonna pray for the church. I'm gonna be involved in the church. I'm gonna do the things I know to do. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna work in the nursery if I need to. I'm gonna flip hamburgers so I can feed the kids. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to see God's work go forward. I, I listen. My, my 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 carnal man says I'm content right here. We got a baptistry. We got a pulpit. We got carpet. We got lights. My carnal man says I'm content, but my spiritual man rises up and says we got to do more. We got to do better. We got to reach the lost. We got to be that bridge that brings people from that culture to the kingdom. We must be. We must be. We must be. We must be. Thank you, Lord. We must be. We must be. Thank you, Lord. I, I look at I look at some of these young people. And I'm closing. I'm just busy, but I'm closing. I look at some of the young people here. I, I see Weston and, and 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 some of these young men. They're not satisfied with just being popular at school. They are. They're popular at school. They're not just. They're not satisfied just doing sports. They're not satisfied with just getting getting a career track going for them. That's, that's all well and good, and it's very very needful that we should do those things. Get a career track and know what you're going to do and all those things. But they're seeking after spiritual things as well. You see, all of us start out spiritual. And Paul said to the Galatians, and I'll paraphrase, why is it that you started out in the spirit, but now you want to live in the carnal? He said not only was Moses content to dwell with his father-in-law, he was also content, content to dwell, dwell with the flesh. When you're content to dwell with the man, you dwell with the flesh. I want to, li- I want to live in this carnality, and I want to do my thing, when I want to do it, and how I want to do it, and nobody's going to tell me what to do. Amen. I want to be content with the things God gives me. I don't want there to be a holy discontentment in my life that I'm not satisfied until the place is full. And when the place is full, there's a bigger place to fill. When that house is full, build another house. And when that house is full, build another house. I know some of you hadn't caught that vision yet. And I know I, 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 know I, I, could, I could be busy and not do it, do it, but Tuesday night's, I get to sit back here at the table with, with from uh, two to six or eight guys, and I get to do Bible study with them. I get to look in hungry eyes, and I get to preach Jesus Christ. Amen? 
and I, we're going to see folks come to him and not just for the sake of, you know, getting out of jail or whatever. They're going to come to him and they're going to live for him and they're going to do for him and they're not going to be content. I said that about the guys who go, uh, I, I, I'm really, uh, I, I'm really, uh, uh, Noah, I'm just really proud of him because he's saved, but he's not satisfied. It's hard to be saved, not, but don't be satisfied. You know, just keep on raising your hand. Keep on praying through. Keep on reaching out to God and see what he will do for you. Don't get saved and sit down. Don't get saved and just go to the back of the, uh, you know, go back and sit down and, and, you know, slouch down in the chair and whittle on your fingernails. When you get saved, don't be satisfied. Just continue to move in the grace of God and the greatness of God, and we will see what God's going to do with the next generation. I'm proud of where we've come in this generation. I'm proud of the next generation coming on. But I need to see grandchildren and great-grandchildren living for God and having a desire to do for God. Can you say amen? Stand with me right now. Are you content? That's the question today. Are you content? I'm going I'm to close with that question. If you're content with what's going on, if you're content, say, I, or, or maybe, maybe you just say, I wish, it would, I wish it was like it was 20 years ago. It's never going to be like it was 20 years ago. I wish it was like it was 30. It'll never be like it was 30 years ago. You'll never go to a church or another church or any church where it's the same as it was 30 years ago. Things have changed and time has changed. Things like 9-11 happens. Things like, like, like uh, uh, assaults against the kingdom of God happen, and it'll never be the same. But you and I can be the same, and we can, we, can, we can get goosebumps when we think about the goodness of God and what He wants to do for us. And my question to you today and my closing comment is simply this. I hope there's a holy discontentment in your life that you're not satisfied with the status quo, the same old, same old, here and there and everywhere. I want God to do something, I mean, supernatural, divine in my life. I want God to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that I cannot contain. I want God to open up the windows of heaven, pour out blessings this church cannot contain, that we can build homes, we can build churches, we can do everything that God has called us to do, and we can reach that generation and that generation and that culture and that culture. Until Jesus comes, we will continue. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. I'm just going to ask you today. I'm not going to do a, a prolonged appeal. But if there are those in this building today who are not content, there's a restlessness in your soul. There's a, there's a yearning, a longing, a hunger, a thirst for the things of God in your soul. And we already know that drugs can't satisfy that. We already know that relationships can't satisfy. You can get the guy that you dreamed about, but he's not going to satisfy you spiritually. You can get the girl of your dream, but they're not going to satisfy you spiritually. It's going to take a deep move of God in your life to be satisfied with Him. And then we're not content. We want to move on. We want to move on. We want to move on. Churches in America today, and I'm not an authority on this, but I know what I felt. Churches in America today, we're just satisfied. We're content. We're content. But my question to you today as an individual, and even as a part of this church, is are you content? And if you're not content, I want you to run just as fast as you can. And I want you to cry out to God and say, God, fulfill the promises in my life. Fulfill the promises in my life. What you promised me through my family, what you promised me through the ministry, what you promised me through the prophesied word of God, and the things that I have laid before you, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. Fulfill those things in my life. I'm not content as I am. I want to grow in grace and knowledge. Come on, that's it right now. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not content. Oh, 
Moses was content to dwell on the backside of the desert while there's two and a half or better million Jews that needed him. We can hide ourselves in the church. We can cloak ourselves in religiosity. We can put on the robes of righteousness and hide ourselves in the choir or in the pew. But God said, I've got a work for you to do. There are people I need you to lead. There are people you need to bring out of bondage. And it's up to you. I'm not content to dwell with the man. How about you? How about you? Now here's what I want you to do. Move it as close as you can. I want you to cry out to God in that discontentment. Say, God, I know I had, we might repent first. God, I know I hadn't done what I need to do. I hadn't been what I ought to be. I hadn't experienced what I need to experience as far as relationship with you. But today, there's something churning within me. There's a void in my life that only you can fill. And I cry out to you, Lord, in my holy discontentment. Use me for your glory. Use me for your kingdom. Use me that others can cross the bridge from, from the world to the church, from the world church culture to the church culture, and see a change in me, in Jesus' name. Cry out to him right now. Come on, cry out to him. Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Put my definition back up there one more time, Heather, please. Thank you, Lord. My definition one more time. Are we satisfied with a certain level of achievement? Are we satisfied just with a certain place that we are? We plateau, we peak. No, no, no. There's more. Tell somebody there's more. Oh, yes. Go ahead. God, I'm yours. I'm here. I'm here to present myself to you. How many of you want to do more? See more. Be more. Woo. Here in your love. No place I'd rather be. Come on, that's it. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Than here in your love. Whenever people were talking about the uh, the bridge at Burns when they was asking us and asking about the bridge house, is that all of them, or ones I talked to at least, all of them have one thing. They said, you know, we have gotten so comfortable, we have gotten so comfortable in our in our church and and the way we do things. They said, 
you know, this becomes challenging because we're reminded that everything goes outside the church and there's more to do out there. And I can say this right here about being in a church, you know, one thing that we want to do, especially going into this new name, into this new era, is we want to be challenged. Who wants to go to a church where they're not challenged? Do you want to go to a church where you're not challenged? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be comfortable. I want to be challenged in every aspect of my Christian walk. Amen. I want something to challenge my faith. I want something to challenge who I am. I just don't want to be just a norm, everything, status quo. But I want to be challenged. One more time while we're being dismissed, let's lift our hands in this place. And I want you to pray this prayer right here. I want you to say, God, challenge me. Allow me to be challenged. I don't want to show up next year and be the same person that I am because if you're not challenged you're not going to change, amen I want to be challenged so I can change I can go from glory to glory I can be a different person this time next year that I can grow come on, I want you to pray that right now God teach me to grow Lord and I know if I'm going to grow I've got to be challenged I've got to be challenged to come out from where I am and who I am right now Lord next year let me look at myself let me at this point next year, let me examine myself and say, am I a different person? Have I grown since I come in contact with you, Lord? I want to be different. I want to be more than what I am because I serve a God that's bigger and greater than I can ever imagine. Amen. Set a fire inside of me. Set a fire. Amen. Amen. I want you to be thinking about this message throughout the week. I want you to come back Wednesday night. I want you to be ready for Wednesday night. We're going to continue to grow more and more and more. Amen. I said at the beginning of this year, I said this is a year of growth, not just a number, but spiritual growth. How many are saying this year I felt some growth already? I, I feel like I'm a different person. Amen. I feel that way myself. I feel like a, I feel like God is growing us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hey, don't forget tonight, tonight's youth service night. Come back and, and be with our young people. Push them. They need somebody in the cheering section as, you know, cheering them on because they're growing as well. Amen. Let's come back and be a part of that tonight at 530. Come back and be a part. Go back and see us back at the back table back here. Order a shirt. Let us know if you're coming on the zoo trip or not. Amen. Come back and see us. Walk by there and, and see us. Get some information on the 5K, the bridge house. We'll be back in the back at the table. Amen. You are dismissed this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed week. We'll see you Wednesday night back here. Amen. At 7 o'clock. There's going to be a baby shower next Sunday right after church, uh, Tyler and Brittany. Amen. They are registered at Walmart. Got a baby boy on the way. Let's bless them next Sunday. Amen. Be here and be a part of that. Tyler and Brittany. Thank you.